Hey, welcome to Adventures with Babs. Today we are painting this Mongoose Publishing Judge figure. I'm going to be using this in the Warlord Games Judge Dread and maybe some uh, Games Workshop RPG. I don't know. It'd be fun in that. So let's get into Crusader skin up first. This model does not have a lot of flesh. So this step is super quick and easy. I'm going to get his chin. And then we can swiftly move on. Now, I'm making it my goal for this year. If you're watching this in the future, it's 2023. My goal is to try and paint as much Judge Dread figures as I possibly can. Over on my blog, Adventures with Peps, I'm going to be creating posts about all the figures. They're going to have their rule set to use them in Warlord games and how to use them in the old games workshop rpg so please keep an eye out for that i'll we'll have a link to the blog in the description and then at a later date once i've created the post for this model i will also click in that link as well there you go very quick first step here it is fill the brush with paint slap him in the chin super easy super quick as you will see, this model takes about 20 minutes start to finish to get painted. I love speed paints. So this is going to be his bodysuit, Cloudburst Blue. For street judges, med judges, uh, side judges, any normal everyday judge of Mega City 1, I am doing in a blue bodysuit. That then allows me to paint any SJS judges up in black leather suits which will help distinguish them in gameplay. I know the SJSs have their skull suits and motifs but I just feel having this blue versus the black it just distinguishes them a bit better. I'm trying my best to keep neat and tidy. I don't want to drag the paint too much so you see me loading up again but I am going a simple left to right I'm doing this because I find it adds a little bit of texture because you do get those brush marks but it also helps put the paint into the creases a lot easier there you go that's his trousers done and then we're going to move on to a slightly more difficult body for me um, these speed paints are wonderful it lets me get a model painted in 20 minutes and I can move on with my life Yes, they're not going to win any competitions, but they do look really good from three foot away. And when they're on a tabletop, they look amazing. I think it's better to have paint on a model than to have no paint. And if I decide at a later date I want to do more to him, I've got the option. But I'm not in the mood currently to go beyond this level. <laughs> so if you're looking for more detailed how to paint post i can recommend some channels so drop me a comment and i'll send you their way but if you're looking for just something to paint along with and listen to maybe pick up how to use speed paints maybe you're unsure that's who i am that's how this channel is going to be going for a little while so if you like quick and dirty paint schemes this is the channel for you so you might as well hit like, you might as well hit subscribe, and you can follow along with all the fun. I recently unlocked the community posts as well. So I've started using them. Feel free to go check out some of the postings. I'm probably going to be working out what to paint next there. So be sure to head over and give that a little vote. Uh, it's also where I'm going to just be putting some random thoughts. You'll get the odd comic review, book review. Uh, me talking about something that I've bought that week maybe. I'm going to be all over the place. This channel is not about one topic in particular. I do a bit of everything so you'll find Judge Dredd, you'll find some Strontium Dog, you'll find Slain 2000 AD comics, uh, Warhammer 40k, hoping to do some Age of Sigma soon. Loads of Blood Bowl over here as well. There's also some PC gaming so yeah I don't niche down, this is just my hobby blog. 
I do a bit of everything, whatever is interesting me at the time. So I hope you want to join in that adventure. Right, now it's getting fiddly. Having to pay attention here. He has a lot of nooks and crannies. Especially around this badge. Sorry that you're getting a beautiful zoomed in focused on my thumb. Beautiful thumb, that's worth a like on its own. Or probably a dislike, more realistically. But yeah, this model, it's very simple. He's holding his day stick. Possibly got a gun in one of these boot holsters and a knife in the other one. He's just the perfect street judge. Probably gonna name him after a character from a Eisenhorn, not sure which character yet, but I've themed my entire sector on Dan Abnett, the main block is going to be called Dan Abnett, all the characters within I'm trying to name after things that you'd find in his 40k novels, and some of his obviously 2000 AD stories. So you're going to see things like, oh, hang on, Magic Blue for the visor. So you're going to see things like the City Death. First group that I got is called the Blue Bloods, after a army unit from Gaunt Ghosts. I'm also planning on doing like a Eisenhorn private investigator who lives in the block, along with some really silly stuff. So I plan on having people like Sinister Dexter turn up. Uh, there's a lot of stuff coming from Gaunt's Ghosts at the moment. Just because they have so many names and characters in there, it's an easy one to do it. But like, the medic of the block is going to be Dawn, as he is in, or Doran. I always forget the name wrong. Let's move on to the Grim Black. Um, I lost my train of thought. Yeah. Basically, I'm stealing names from any book that Dan Abnett has done and that I've read. It's a good excuse for me to read. But you're going to see weird things. There'll be some Space Marine names coming into play. There'll be some Gaunt Ghosts, some Eisenhorn and the Inquisitor stuff. I just thought it'd be fun. Most of the city blocks in Mega City 1 are named after a celebrity. So the Dan Abnett block made sense to me. I can also imagine that maybe a few of the characters, especially the City Dev or the um, the Blood Packers block gang, maybe they found one of his novels and it's inspired their complete way of life because they're so busy being unemployed that the insanity has kicked in. So if you've got any suggestions for names, let me know in the comments below. Maybe I'll... Uh, be inspired to use it. Oof, this black is hard. I might have to redo it. I think the helmet is just a too smooth of a surface, so it's not getting good coverage. Probably what I'll do at the end of this video is take a picture of the finished model, just speed paint, so you can all see it. And then I'll go back in and touch up a few areas that I feel need it. Take another picture of that after the fact. I do love my speed paints, but yeah, as soon as they hit a smooth surface, they do struggle a little bit. These paints aren't good for Space Marines. I know I use them on Space Marines, but they do struggle over the shoulder pads and very smooth areas like that. So we're about halfway through now. The Grave Lord Grey. I'm going to use this on the day stick. Uh, I just want to use it to add a different colour. Um, I was thinking of using the Grim Black. But I was worried it was too samey same. The slight difference in colour might help. But I think this could have the same issue as the helmet. With it just being this one straight smooth line 
I just know the contrast paint isn't going to particularly like it. It will cover it. It'll act as a good base coat. You can always go back in later. You just have to see how it dries. So what's everyone else's goals for 2023? I've told you about my Judge Dredden. I think I'm going to try and get back into the 2000 AD comics. Obviously reading a lot more Dan Abnett stories this year. Get my inspiration for names. But yeah, what's everyone else doing? What projects are you all going to be working on this year? Let me know in the comments. I want to feel inspired. I want to see what you're doing. I want to hear what you're doing. If you have a channel, let me know. Tell me the name of it so I can come find you. At this stage, I also decided to use this grey to represent the concrete base. These paints aren't the perfect thing for <laughs> covering, but I had plenty squeezed out of my wet palette. It spilt a little bit too much. I thought I might as well use it up. Get a base coat down. Let's me uh, see what I'm working with. And there we go. It's starting to take shape. Um, I've also nearly finished my gang of models from the start of that. Once I've got them done, we can do the second battle report. It will see the rookie judge and the street judge up against the gangers as they try to get their revenge on the judges. Uh, we've got another quick step coming up, the Slaughter Red. It, unsurprisingly, is going to be used for the red on the helmet. This is just the bright, bold red that should pop against that black. Uh, this I am not doing any editing to. So the drying time wasn't long between me doing the black and the red. It was just the time that I used to do the grey. A lot of people have complained about uh, reactivation colors mixing quite quickly with the speed paints. I personally have not found that to be a problem. It does happen now and again when I'm being really disrespectful and not giving it time to start setting. As you can see, I was able to do this red edge onto the, next to the freshly painted black with no real issue. We also have a bright light that does pump out some heat, so that probably does help with the drying process. But at this stage you can really see the model taking shape. Gotta concentrate. There we go. Ugh, heat paint and straight lines. <laughs> I have the shakes. So doing something like this really takes a lot of effort and time from me. This is a wonderful view of my hand, I just realised. But there we go. Shakes and no shakes, we now have a visored helmet. As you can see the black is patchy. It's definitely going to need a proper paint over. Just in the end of the world I'll probably use some GW paints fill in that black to make it look a bit better and I just need to touch up some blue I noticed I've missed there we go starting to take shape now pretty happy with this it's looking good we're now on to Orc Skin. This is going to be the iconic green of the boots, the gloves, the elbow pads and the knee pads. I'm quite fond of this green. I think it would look great on a Mantis Warrior Space Marine, so expect to see that soon. It's got a lot of pigment in it. Goes on really nicely. And very much like the bodysuit. Trying to sweep in one direction as much as possible. Just to give it some consistency. I 
And yeah, I think this green is a wonderful shade. Definitely wouldn't use it on orc flesh. I think it's too bright, it's too comical for an orc. Definitely would want a darker shade. But it really pops against the darker blue of the bodysuit. I think what we'll do here is skip to the next stage. This will take a little while with all the fine details that are happening. Right, we're back. Just finishing up that last elbow pad. Look at it popping. It's already popping. So bright. <laughs> love it. Here's a quick view of how he's looking. You can see the blue has dropped now. That might need a second coat as well. We're entering the final stages. So Zealot Yellow. This I'm going to use to represent all the gold areas. I don't like metallic paints at all. So I'm using this to represent a more comic book gold yellow color. I'm going to use it on his helmet badge. Which is really fiddly. I'm going to use it on the chain, his zipper, and obviously his name badge. I'm then going to do his belt as well. Um, as you'll see, I do his entire belt yellow. I think I'm going to go back and do the pouches green. It looks all right from his back, but on the front where he's got the big golden belt buckle. Just kind of, it loses its impact when all these pouches are also yellow. I could also do them brown. I'll have to have a think on that. And then we get the big shoulder pad. And of course his Eagle of Justice. So if you've reached this far in the video, you've obviously found something of use, or you're just a psycho and enjoy listening to me talk. But either way, Hit that subscribe. I am like shooting for a thousand followers. I want to hit that thousand. I've got the uh, got the YouTube bug. I think uh, maybe at a thousand we'll also do a giveaway. I'm not sure what, how I'm gonna do it, but we'll do some sort of a giveaway to celebrate. Cause I am super excited about that. And as always, I appreciate all of you stopping by, giving me likes, giving me feedback. Whether it's on here or over on my social media channels. I do truly appreciate all the engagement you're giving me. So, with that, we'll call it a day for this base coat. I will see you soon with some final photos. But I hope you enjoyed. Hope uh, you'll come back for the next video. And cheers for watching. Have a good day.